Well, the foreclosure fiasco is back. It took center stage on Capitol Hill today with the Senate Banking Committee hearing. They heard testimony from major players. Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller outlined his 50-state investigation for the panel. Plus, representatives from Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase, they were called on to tell their side of the story. And that is when things got really interesting. I want to emphasize that Chase strongly prefers to work with borrowers to reach a solution that permits, permits them to keep their homes. Foreclosures cause significant hardship to borrowers and If Chase borrowers here foreclosures. cannot have them perjury, what you're saying you need to hear from the homeowner. You have Dave lying. He is lying. He did it last April from the House Financial Services Committee. No, we have homeowners here. Let them hear. Chairman, let the homeowners speak to do that. Okay. Here come the cops. Taking away uh, one of our frequent guests, Bruce Marks, CEO of the Neighborhood Assistant Corporation of America. He's escorted out. And his methods of protest, hey, they may not be eloquent, but I got to tell you, Bruce makes a good point here. If the banks were trying to do the right thing for homeowners, we wouldn't have this foreclosure mess in the first place. There are many issues at stake. In fact, the housing market as a whole could be in jeopardy and the economy. The banks hired the robo-signers. The banks are foreclosing on people without the right documentation and without complying with the letter of the law. Only banks can solve this problem. They need to get on it. All right. Meanwhile, mortgages have been traded among financial companies so often that some banks, they can't even keep track. Our next guest was paying her monthly mortgage, taxes, and insurance on her home and received statements each month indicating that she was current on her payments. Except the bank sold the mortgage to somebody else. Well, it's actually a lawsuit being fought out in Arizona right now. Here now to tell us what's going on with this case, Allison Youngreen and her attorney, Steve Vondren of ForeclosureDefenseResourceCenter.com. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Jerry. Good Thank to you have you Thank here. You. Hi. Allison, so tell me your story. What happened and, and, and why were you so angry? What was the treatment that you received that was, that was so wrong? Uh, well, it starts out by I, I did get a couple months behind on my mortgage payment. Um, and then I tried to work with Bank of America. They put me right into the foreclosure process. And um, after much ado, I, I would call and say, could I get the uh, reinstatement amount? And no operator would give me that reinstatement amount. Over and over again, I tried to get that. It almost seemed like they didn't want me to reinstate my house, but they make more money otherwise. I don't know. But so I did become current. I reinstated my loan. Uh, an hour after I reinstated the loan, I was told that um, a gentleman came to my home and told me he bought my house at auction. How so, in the holy um, heck does it, Steve get in here? Help us out. <laughs> yeah. How does this, how does I, this happen? <laughs> And, and, uh, and I made three more mortgage payments after that. The bank said, okay. I said, am I good? They said, you're great. And when the mortgage uh, statement comes in August, pay it. And I paid August, September, October. They kept cashing my checks. And in good faith, I trusted them. And all of a sudden, I'm facing eviction. So, Steve, yes, she actually paid something uh, like $13,000, as I understand it, to, to come current um, at the bank's yeah, direction. 15000 Fifteen thousand at the bank's direction, and then what happened, Steve? How did this go so wrong? Well, there's a potential issue, uh, as you talked about. Uh, we've been saying it all along that these so-called lenders and servicers are passing around the notes like a whiskey bottle at a frat party, and when sometimes when that roulette wheel stops, you don't know who owns a loan, and you don't know if they're going to allow you to reinstate your loan. Which, by the way is a legal right in just about every state that I know. So uh, to deprive a homeowner their ability to come bring that current is truly a, truly a debacle. Well, we're looking at pictures of Allison's house right now. Tell, Allison, what's your situation now? Where are you living? Well, I am currently in the house, and we go to uh, court on Thursday to see if I'm going to be evicted. Yeah, we have a temporary stay on the eviction action. We got that stayed, and we're trying to consolidate the unlawful detainer case with our civil action where we have sued Bank of America for damages and to quiet title to get her the house back that she reinstated, that they cashed the check, and they continued to cash checks. Uh, so we're fighting for that house. It's, it may be uh, Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed here, but we're going to fight that fight.
Allison, so They've you're out of pocket, your payments for the house, for the mortgage, you're presumably paying Steve something to represent you. How do uh -huh. you get make, made whole here? What, do you, what are you looking for from the court, from the bank, and do you think you can win? Uh, well, I, I hope I can win, but um, I, I, w I would like my house back. I worked really hard on this home. I thought it was going to be the house that I would retire in. I, I fixed it up just so, uh, you know, it, it's my home. And to, you know, have the, the rug pulled out from underneath me, it's just, I, I'm not sleeping well. I have a medical diagnosis that is just, uh, you know, been exacerbated by this. And uh, I just, I feel like I've aged seven years in this one year because of the stress I've gone through. I would like my home back. I think that's the right thing to do. And some compensation for, um, you know, the, the toll it's taken on me. And we hear so much about uh, Bank of America, higher standards, banking on America. We're here to enforce those rights. Let's make it something more than empty rhetoric. Let's get her house back. She reinstated her loan under Arizona law. Well, Steve, I mean, what are you doing to help her? At the end of the day, what, what do you think happened here? Do you think that one part of the well, bank sold, could... pardon me, sir. Do you think that one part no, of the sir. bank actually sold the house without telling the other part of the bank? I mean, how do you get to this place? It's. It's very possible what we see, and I've seen these in the middle of litigation, I've seen them trading the notes in the middle of a litigation with an injunction in effect. So yes, it's very possible. There's things going on in the back room that we don't know about. These things are coming to light. Who owns your loan? Uh, and in her case, she reinstated. Maybe that loan was traded off at the last minute, and the new party that claimed ownership of that loan decided that they're not going to honor the reinstatement. So we're going to get to the bottom of this. If we could resolve this uh, uh, you know, over, a, uh, you know, over a, a beer summit or something, we would. But they don't do that. So we had to file a lawsuit, bring the parties to court, and let the court sort this out. Allison, you know, this whole scenario, all of these scenarios are so controversial because people who never miss the payment, their home values go down because of scenarios like this. What do you have to say to those people? Oh, and, and this is not just for me. I really, I mean, my heart goes out to, to people. I, when, when the home uh, mortgage prices started dropping and people were losing everything and they were out on the streets, I, I felt so bad. And, and I thought, well, you know, at least I'm in a good situation. And because of a medical diagnosis, I ran into some financial difficulty and I find myself here. So I hope I can speak to all the people that you know, have gone through this with Bank of America. I've heard a lot of horror stories as I tell my story. Everybody's got a bad story to tell about them, but, and other banks well, as well. That, you know, it's just fight for it. It's your home. It's, it's, it's the roof over your head. It's where you should raise your children. Well, you know, you know I, it's I, worth your, fighting for. Your point being, which I think is very well put, is that it could happen to anybody, and no one is that far away, generally speaking, from a scenario like this. And of course, I want to repeat, we want Bank of America to come on and talk to us about this. I'm sure they have a point of view that they would uh, very well represent, and we would love to have them on in the meantime. Stephen Allison, thanks so much for helping us out today Thank and you, telling Jerry. us your story. We, Allison, good luck. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Terry. All right, a class action suit that could literally end all other class action suits. Next, I'll be joined by the lawyer going in front of the U.S. Supreme Court on behalf of consumers. The details of his case, next.